Okay, the image on the left is called The Swing After Fragonard, and it is by Yinka Shonobari, and it's from 2001, and it was a mixed media installation. So, um, clearly it's in reference to Fragonard's The Swing. In 1767, the French Rococo artist Jean-Honoré Fragonard received an unusual commission from the Baron de St. Julian, who was a notorious playboy. The Baron requested a portrait of his beautiful young mistress, but that was not all. The mischievous Baron also instructed Fragonard to place me in a position where I can observe the legs of that charming girl. So Fragonard enthusiastically fulfilled Baron's request. He created a delightfully frivolous scene featuring the Baron's beautiful mistress dressed in a luxurious silk gown perched on a swing, pushed by her much older husband, and she glides above a lush green garden, and Fragonard captures the moment of joyful spontaneity as the flirtatious mistress kicks off one of her tiny pink shoes, carefully positioned so that he can look up her billowing skirt. The playboy baron hides in the foreground. Um, so this is uh, Shonabari's three-dimensional installation that's deliberately paraphrasing Fragonard's famous Rococo masterpiece. He preserves a young mistress perched on a swing. Her shoe is still suspended in mid-air, now held by a transparent wire. Shonabari's work also includes branches to represent the foliage of Fragonard's painting. Shonabari does more than simply appropriate a familiar artistic scene, he also creates a new visual statement by both omitting and adding unexpected details. Shonabari's young mistress is a headless mannequin. She still wears billowing robes, but a new costume is made from Dutch wax cloth that replaces her silk gown. And finally, Shonabari excludes both the leering baron and the clueless husband. So the question is, is why did Shonabari change these details and what issues is he addressing here? So for modern viewers and this headless mannequin, Shonabari's decision to omit Fragonard's two male figures allows modern viewers to participate in the installation. Like the Baron, viewers can now look up the young woman's skirt and this creates an immersive experience resembling the technique used by Carl Walker to project her viewer shadows among the silhouettes in Darky Town Rebellion. Like most of Shonabari's sculptural installations, the swing after Fragonard features a headless mannequin. Fragonard's beautiful young mistress enjoyed a hedonistic lifestyle dedicated to pursuing love and enjoying material comforts, and Rococo paintings such as the swing captures the spirit of a frivolous era. Shonabari's headless mannequin is a visual reminder of the cruel fate awaiting French aristocrats, many of whom would be publicly beheaded during the Reign of Terror. The headless fiberglass mannequin also serves another important purpose. Shonabari does not want his figures to be readily identified. Since his coffee-colored mannequin in the swing after Fragonard is neither white nor black, it represents what Shonabari calls a post-racial identity. And then the fabric that she's wearing is supposed to have a complex history. Uh, the cloth worn by the aristocratic mistress has, um, is like as they explored Indonesia, Dutch traders discovered Javanese batik, B-A-T-I-K, or wax printed cloth. They also discovered that beautiful cloth commanded by prices because it required long hours to produce. So determined to make the fashion affordable for the mass market, Dutch textile mills use modern equipment to industrialize production, and English manufacturers in Manchester soon copied the Dutch production methods. So the Dutch and the English produced fabrics that became very popular in West Africa. The cloth's bright colors and geometric design became associated with the struggles of the newly emerging African nation for political and cultural independence. The fabric soon became erroneously thought of as authentic or indigenous West African product. When Shonabari was searching for an artistic identity, a white tutor challenged him by asking him, you're African, aren't you? Why don't you make authentic African art? And so the question led to Shonabari's discovery of the Dutch wax print 
fabrics and the history paralleling his own bicultural biography. Headless mannequins dressed in Dutch wax fabric became signature features of Shanobari's installations, and they represent symbols of Shanobari's own multicultural identity. Um, so, let's see. Let's see if there's anything else. So, it's definitely a 3D recreation of the famous Rococo painting, and um, it invites the viewers to an increasing to consider the increasing disparity between economic classes today, especially alongside the economic or the disparity between the growing culture of paranoia, terror, and global politics since 9-11. So Shanavari is a British-born Nigerian, but was raised in both Lagos and London. He is particularly interested in ways in which there's issues of access, nationalism and belonging have their roots in much of European history and specifically the UK's relationship with its former colonies. Uh, living in England with my post-colonial relationship to this country, one cannot escape all these Victorian things because they're everywhere in architecture, culture, and attitude. Um, so all of like on the other piece is the take on Goya's Sleep of Reason, which he photographed with five different men representing one of the five continents. So again, we're playing with the, um, you know, the de different fabrics here. So he, he appropriates different types of paintings throughout his stuff. Um, but one of the things we could think about is these fabrics we know of today are a result of the complex economic and cultural relationship of imperialism. And all of Shanavari's other works appropriate other image, including biographies, world events, and works of art that are already allegories concerning race, class, corruption, and greed. And he often calls attention to some of the darker moments in Western history. So that's the swing after Fragonard from 2001.